Hey guys and welcome to my video on Haplodiploidy as promised. I did say in the previous video that I would be doing a video on it. So here it is. So I'm going to do it a little bit different than what I've been doing in my other videos. I'm going to explain a bit about it because you need to kind of know what it's all about to be able to do the question. And I'm going to be doing a question that has been part of one of our tats and it has also come up in a test before. So I thought it's actually a very good very good question and it it, um, it encompasses the, uh, what do I call it, the subject very nicely. Right, so hap haplodiploidy is a type of sex determination system. It doesn't necessarily have to do with particular sex chromosomes, but bees or ants are involved in this type of sex determination system. So, just to start off, I'm going, to, I'm going to use my, my, um, my animal of choice is going to be bees for this particular question. So I'm just going to draw a, draw a little female bee over here. There's my little bee. So cute. Anyways, and um, female bees, uh, obviously like all other animals, are able to make, to make gametes and they are also deployed creatures, right? So they have a full set of chromosomes from their mother and they have a full set of chromosomes from their father. And they are diploid for all of their genes. So that meaning means that like for every gene that they have, they have two alleles for that gene. So I'm gonna go with like, let's say we have this little creature can be big A, small A for gene one and big B, small G, B for gene two. So that's her genotype. And what the amazing thing, what this little little queen bee can do is she can give off gametes. So I'm just gonna write all of her different gametes down. So she can be big, big A, big B, big A, small B. She can also be little A, big B, and she can be little A, little b. So those are all the gametes that this bee can give off. But the amazing thing that she can do is not only can a male bee come from somewhere in the field and fertilize her eggs or gametes that she gives off, but male bees can grow off from her gametes when they aren't fertilized. The reason she can do that is because she is an independent bee that don't need no man. Okay, had to get that off my chest. Okay, no, I'm just joking. So, well, it is true. She can, she can actually like if no, um, no male bee is really around in that field. It uh, in incredibly like I just I actually found it very interesting. Incredibly, the the eggs will just develop into their own haploid male bees. But before I get to do it, to get to that, let's also pretend that there is a little male bee, he's fatter than, than the female bee. He, and I won't give him a stripe so we can distinguish. And he can also have like a little stinger there. Um, he, let's give him a little genotype. And let's say he is just um, big A, big B. And remember that males are always haploid. So they don't have two pairs of alleles for each gene. They only have one allele per um, Per gene because they only received their chromosome number from them from their mothers so that AB is just literally an egg that just grew and became a male but now if he has to has to produce gametes because he still will he'll still kind of undergo he doesn't really undergo meiosis the way this um, female bee did I'm just gonna put a symbol over here so we know what we're dealing with. He ends up just making A B gametes. So they don't separate. Because if they did then only the A gene would be given to a female B or only the B gene will be given to a female B. And then you know the B will have all sorts of um biological problems with it. So now, for example, 
if these two lovely little bees had to come together and they decided to have babies, then all of its offspring would be female because female bees are diploid. So if I, oh sorry, drop my thing. So if, let me just do the cross. So if I had to, had to do this cross, let's write it down in a normal Punnett square. All right, so here are all the offspring of these two bees. Just note that I haven't really said like what the A and B genes um, mean or like what, what their genes um, phenotypes are. It doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to give you an explanation of how haploidy, haploidy works and then we'll get on to the question. Okay, and if you don't really need this part of the question, uh, then, you know, you can skip ahead. Right, so as I'm just doing this, finishing it off. Right, so those, let's do this quickly. That's all my F1 progeny from those two parents. So that's the gametes from this parent, and that's the gametes from that parent. Um, and as you can see, these are all diploid. They have two alleles for gene A and two alleles for gene B. So these will all be female, no matter what, like I said, because female bees are diploid. But say, for example, that this male bee wasn't around to, to um, fertilize these eggs. This female bee still has to, has to promote, um, you know, the continu continuation of her species. So what, how they've kind of developed is that if eggs are left alone, they still develop into male bees. So what happens is you'll get male bees with genotypes that look like this. And they will be haploid because they only have half a set of chromosomes. They only have one allele for, for gene A and they have one allele for gene B. And that's what makes them haploid. Um, I'm wondering is there anything else I should just say about it. So in this case, all the offspring will be males. So you'll never ever have a, a diploid female. You always have a, oh sorry, you will have a diploid female. You'll never have a haploid female. Um, and that's how pretty much how haplodiploidy works. So now I'm going to be moving on to a question. Let me just get it in front of me. Okay, so this is a question that we have had um, in our type 5, um, and it is actually question 5 as well. Sorry, I'm just checking that my video is still playing. Alright, so you can pause the, the video now. I have put the question in the comments. And you can give it a read and then we'll start with it. Oops, dokie. So, they've given you a whole lot of information, and again they have told you that males who are drones are, have unfertilized eggs and are haploid and females are workers and queens and they're diploid and they are they come from fertilized eggs and that's pretty much what i've explained to you over here they also though we're also dealing with two different types of um uh, of genes here we're dealing with a gene that that um that governs eye color and we're dealing with a gene that that governs like whether whether they produce wax or resin and that's very important apparently to seal crevices in their hive all right and there but i just wanted to tell you guys a very important thing is i tell you that males are only drones and females can be workers so it's only the females that produce the wax or the resin that is very very important all right so i'm going to do this a bit different i'm just going to do it blind um and so I have to read the question and be able to tell you what's going on. Uh, so pretty much what they want to know is they want the appearance of the workers in the hive and their frequencies. So when they say workers, they are talking about the females. Um, all right. So firstly, they tell you that there's a queen bee. And she has a genotype. Big W, little w, big R, little r. So she's a heterozygote, just like this one over here. And she is crossed with a black-eyed drone and remember the males are haploid so if she's black well if the, if the male has black eyes then he is little w 
and he apparently carries the little r allele. And remember, haploid are males and diploids are females. But I have also skipped one of my very most important rules for myself is I always write down my symbols first. So let me, that's our cross, but let me just write our symbols down. So apparently big W means black eyes. And that is our first gene. Oh, gene, yeah, gene. And little W together, homozygous little W means white eyes. Um, yeah. Now we have a, a second um, gene, which has to do with uh, crevice sealants, I guess. And we have big R, which is for wax. And we have little r, which is for resin, I think. Let me just check. Yeah, it's for resin. Okay, so those are obviously my my two um, uh, traits for eyes and crevice sealants. Uh, also, you guys have to know that with other sex determination systems, we have been de dealing with sex chromosomes, but these actually don't deal with sex chromosomes at all. These are just autosomal genes and they have nothing to do with sex chromosomes. So that's very interesting to note. All right, so that's our first pair. So again, I'm just going to write out my geno oh, yeah, sorry, my gametes from my um, from my female. And remember, the male doesn't undergo meiosis because he is already in haploid form, and we can't split up the two um, the two genes. So if if the, that's he's already in gamete form so I'm just gonna write it down all right and here are my progeny my progeny results I should say all right so as we can see that they are all female because they are deployed they have two alleles per gene and our progeny numbers so let me just write it down so what we can see here is these two will have black eyes but this one will um, will produce resin um, this one will have black eyes and oh sorry I lied sorry this one will have black eyes but produce wax this one will have black eyes and produce resin then this one will have white eyes and produce wax and this one will have white eyes and produce resin so it's pretty much a one to one to one to one ratio I'm just gonna write that down I don't feel like writing the I don't know the words that I've just said so yeah that's my ratio um, and there's also a second part to this question so those are all my females and they have asked for my workers um, but to move on with the question, there's also a B section where it says gives, give the genotypes of the male offspring and their relative frequencies. So the, <laughs> the funny part of with this is I saw everyone getting really confused and being like, how can there be males? We just did the cross and there's no males. What do we do? But it's actually a really great quest question because all the gay meats that the, the female bee, the queen bee produced, are the actual males. So these are actually male gametes all of them so it's just it's literally this just this line and a male bee was not able to come along and fertilize the female eggs and that's why these unfertilized eggs just grew and became males and they are haploid um, and if you I'm just going to show you with the first two is this one although it only has one w allele it's still it's still the males still have white or black eyes right but because males can't be workers they just carry the alleles for for the wax sealants or sorry not wax sealants but crevice sealants so you have to still say that flies can have 
white the male flies can have white or black eyes but they carry an allele for um for the the crevice sealants so for example this male i'm just going to put a symbol here so we know we're dealing with the males and here's the females this male has black eyes because he's got a large w but he carries the r allele so he will possibly pass this on to his one of his female offspring and um, maybe in the future and then she will be a wax worker drone and so let's say for this one this last this last male here over here will have white eyes but will carry the r allele yeah, so that's pretty much how you do haplodiploidy and just don't get confused by the fact that the female eggs still kind of grow by themselves and become male haploid individuals. So yeah, I hope the, the video has been um, explanatory to you and that you enjoyed it. So yeah, keep a lookout for my next video. I think I'll be doing calico cats and um, dosage comp compensation next. Cool, have a nice evening.